Hello, I'm Iran Solomon. Today I want to talk, to begin to talk about all the sefirot one by one. In the last lesson we talked about the ten sefirot in a general way, the ten attributes of Hashem. And from today I want to teach you each of the sefirot separately. There is a very important book by Harav Yosef Jikatilia, a splendid book called Sha'arei Ora, Portals of Illuminations, of Illumination, where this rabbi teaches each and every one of the sefirot, but he starts from down, going up. But I think this will be confusing for you, so I think I will begin really at the beginning right from the top. So the first sefirah is called sefirat keter. Keter in Hebrew means the crown. Now I want to talk about crowns in the world. Why is it that crowns are circles that people, that kings, put on their heads? Why are they, are they round? Why are they on their heads? The roundness of crowns is, is really stems from the tzimtzum, from the fact that the retraction that Hashem has created, retreating His light from the area where all the worlds are, was a round area. And Really, the circle is a symbol of infinity. And indeed, around that round space, there is what's called Ein Sof HaMekif, the surrounding infinity. So, without knowing it, almost all nations of the world feel that kings have to have crowns, round crowns, on their heads. And the crown also is indeed above the head, it's on the head, which means it is something which is above our perception. Because indeed, if we look at a king, why is a king king? There is no real reason that makes him king. It's only because he was born that way. He is the son of the former king. So there is something which, really, which is really above, above the mind, above perception in all the, all the matter of kingship. So kings have crowns and the crowns are something which is above the, above, above the brain and they're round uh, circles um, which is re really like the roundness of the symptom of the of, 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 of what is indeed beyond perception, um, which is the surrounding and soft, surrounding infinity around all the worlds. All this, in my mind, is unconsciously uh, done, uh, not by, only by us, uh, only, not only in Judaism, but in, in all other religions and nations also. So the Keter is the first uh, sefira, the first attribute, and all the other attributes really stem from from this uh, sefira. And indeed, the next sefira is called, which is called chokma, wisdom. Um, is really uh, there is a, a pasuk saying, and wisdom. Uh, stems from Ein, from, from nothingness. The Keter is called also Ein, which is nothing or nothingness. And um, in Hebrew, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a double meaning because Me'ain is where from. It's a question. And uh, where from do we find, where, where do we find Chokhmah? But uh, 
you may always also explain this not as a question, me ein, it comes from ein, it comes from ein, ein sof, nothingness, or, or from infinity, which is also called ein. So actually the first, the first sefira, the first attribute, is a sefira which talks about Hashem's uh, being infi infinite. So really the first attribute, the first sefira, is all about the fact that Hashem is infinite. It really talks about His being infinite. It is called sefira, which is also called in Hebrew midah, measurement, but it's a measurement speaking about something which is immeasurable. The Torah, I think we've spoken about that uh, in, a, in an early lesson, the Torah begins with nine, with ten utterances uh, with which the world was created. Vayomer Elohim Yeor, and Hashem said, let there be light, etc., etc. And uh, it is said that in Ma'amarot Nivra Olam, in ten utterances the world was created. And when we count the utterances, the times that the world, the word Vayomer appears in uh, Genesis Perek Aleph, first chapter, if we find that there are actu actually nine times that it is said there Vayomer. So there are only nine utterances, but the Mishnah says in ten utterances. So the, ge the, ge the Gemara asks this question, and the answer is that Bereshit Name Ma'amar Have. Bereshit, the word Bereshit itself, is an utterance. And it is ex explained that it is what, what's, what is referred to as the Ma'amar Hanistar. It's the hidden utterance. So indeed the first utterance, which is really the, the, the Keter, which, has, which is really parallel to, to the to Sefirah of Keter, is a hidden utterance. utterance. It's, it's, a, it's a sefira about something which cannot be nispar, cannot be counted. We count something which, the first thing we count is something which is uh, talking about uh, the inability to count, really, when it comes to uh, Hashem. Because He is infinitely in his infinite unity, as we've said already. All the sefirot they are hinted, have their place in the name of Hashem, in the four letters of Hashem Yud Kei Vav Kei. According to our tradition, the sefirat Keter is really the Kutso Shel Yud. It's this little spitz, it's this little thorn or spike right on top of the Yud. Which means really, that's really the, the, the tiniest spot of, of ink on the scroll of the Torah where really all writings begin from. So it's really, um, it's not even, a, a, it's, a, it's only the beginning of the letter Yud which is the first letter of Hashem. So, here you see graphically also that really Keter is something which is really not there and not really there. It's something which is somewhere in between the, the, the white of the, of the cloth, of the scroll, and, um, and the black of the ink. It has no real measurement, it's even less than a letter. But any, everything starts from that. So really, there is a moral to all this, that everything begins, everything begins from something that's really infinite. And that's true, that's, that's because everything comes from Hashem. And we can't, everything stands upon, everything is, stems from something which is totally um, beyond our grasp. So indeed, wisdom begins from the understanding that we don't understand anything. When we understand that we don't understand, from there really wisdom begins, 
And again, that's the, the verse of Wisdom begins from nothingness. And there was also a, a rabbi who said, The maximum of comprehension is understanding that we cannot comprehend. So these are a few words about an infinite uh, term, an infinite sefira, which is called Keter. And that's the sefira which really um, negates all the conception of sefirot that we can count, that we can uh, understand all the uh, all the conception of of any understanding in uh, in Hashem in His essence, and from that all understanding begins. So stay with us for the next sefira, sefira uh, which is sefirat Hachokma, in our next lesson of a guide to the depths of the Torah. So see you for now. Bye.